Hello everyone, this is a quick video about Brightspace date settings. So first let's talk about the difference between these things. Uh, it throws a lot of people off when they first start with Brightspace. A start date means students cannot submit to this activity before this date. An end date means students cannot submit to this activity after the date. A due date means after this date, late work will be marked as late but it will not restrict them from being able to submit after the date passes. They can still continue to submit. Let's switch over to Brightspace and take a look at how this appears in action. The first thing I'd recommend is if you know you're going to be applying start dates or end dates to anything in your course, adjust your defaults before you start applying those dates. It'll save you a lot of work later. So we're going to course tools and then course admin. From here, we're going to click on the page at the top left corner called Availability Dates Defaults. I would recommend clicking the middle option, Visible with Submission Restricted. This means that before something starts, students will be able to read the instructions in case they want to work ahead, have something drafted, and then submit it once it opens. And then if you have this applied to the end date settings, it also means after this activity is done, Students can go back and still see any instructions, as well as prior submissions or posts that exist. So we can save once we've put those in place. And now we're going to go to content. If you just received this course, let's say you're an adjunct and we shared a course with you that's already pre-built but needs the dates added or updated, you'll want to verify in content that your weekly module dates are correct. If not, you'll have to update them for the new semester. So let's say, I've already updated my weeks. The nice thing about this is that if your, if your dates are in the module titles as text, when you're in that module, like I'm in week two right now, it will put the date in your browser tab. That means as I scroll down, when I wanna look at my activities, I can still see the dates that this week applies to, so it makes it really easy to apply dates. This is the trick that I use when I'm doing the courses myself. So if, let's say I want to apply end dates to my discussions. I would find the discussion for this week and I will click the drop down arrow next to its name and say edit properties in place. After I've done that, I can click this add dates and restrictions area. It's not really clear that it's a button. You just have to kind of know that it's a button <laughs> and when you hover, it will turn gray. If we click that, we'll see these options here. And you might remember I said discussions don't have due dates. That is true. This is going to appear for anything in our content area that we expand the properties for because anything in content can have a due date for having completed that item. It's not going to actually talk to how that activity works. I know it's a little bit confusing, but just know if we apply a due date here, it's not going to mark late posts as late. So the main thing we can add that actually works with how discussions work as an activity is an end date. So I can click here and I'm going to refer to my browser tab. I know this week ends on the 10th. That's a Sunday and my discussions always end on Sunday. So that's what I'm going to put in and it will default to visible submission restricted at the end. However, let's say I want this to appear on my course calendar. I'll have to click this and say add availability dates to calendar. So that end date will appear for students on the course calendar. Now let's scroll down and take a look at assignments. Assignments are a little bit different because they do have due dates. So when I click that drop down arrow, I can say edit properties in place and in add dates and restrictions, when I drop that down, I can add a due date and it's going to work as I would expect it to, where it's going to mark late submissions as late. And the nice thing about due dates is as soon as I add one, it will add this to the course calendar. I don't have to click anything extra. At this point, you can decide whether you want an end date to cut off the ability to submit after a certain point. This is up to your discretion. Uh, you do have the ability to use special access to give specific students who might need to turn things in late access to assignments just for them with specific dates, and then it's still closed for the rest of the students. It depends on your situation if you want to do that or not. But if you do add a end date, end date you can do that here. You might want to like give students an extra two day grace period to turn things in late without having to bug you. Um, but after that, 
they would have to request access from you, but you may not want to add the end date to the calendar and advertise that it's going to be open for an extra two days. Once you've decided what you want applied here, you can click update and it will apply to this assignment. The one last thing I'd like to point out that confuses a lot of people is at the top of our module. You notice like how we had these add dates and restriction areas that would pop up when we expand the properties of our activities below. The modules have that built in at the top as well. And if we click that, just like each of the activities we work with, we have a start, do, and end date feature that we can add dates to. Some people think this just pops the dates into the title, which is not the case. That's the reason we have the title manually with the dates entered here. What this actually does, if you add dates here, is it restricts students' access to the module, which is not really ideal because we want to give our, especially our online learners, the flexibility to look and work ahead. So we recommend ignoring these dates. If you have certain activities you don't want students to start until you're ready for them to, like if you don't want them to post a discussion until that week starts so everybody's in there together, add the start and end dates on the activities themselves, not at the module level. Especially because even if you put start and end dates on a module, the activities are still going to be accessible in the garages. So it's better to apply those restrictions there instead.